Praise the Lord. I welcome you again in to, uh, to this program, to listen to this program in Jesus' name. And I trust that the Lord will minister to your heart from his word. Uh, I want us to begin with a word of prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this program and this moment that you have given to us, O oh God, to share your word, to share your word that is purified, to share your word that is able to build us up, that is able, O oh God, to give us an inheritance among the saints. Lord of glory, I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to our hearts in this program. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you and I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Sakayongeno. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am privileged to share with you the word of God in this program in the name of Jesus. I was sharing in the last, uh, in the last program, the last time I had an opportunity through Revival TV I was sharing about vessels of honor and vessels uh, to dishonor. That is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 19 through 21. I want to continue in the same thought. Uh, we were talking and seeing that God compares his people, whether it's the house of Israel, or the church of Jesus Christ, he compares us in many places with uh, metals, materials that are metallic. And we saw, more particularly, we are compared to gold and to silver. Although other metals are also mentioned, copper, tin, lead, the Bible compares us to those. And we saw from the book of Ezekiel chapter 22, God speaking about Israel, that Israel had become like dross in his sight. That they were no longer the pure people that they were supposed to be. They were no longer the goldish people that were reflecting the character of God. We know that gold speaks of the character or the nature of God, the image of God. It speaks about that image. And God's people are meant to reflect to the world God's uh, nature or God's character, God's image to the world. We are meant to, to portray. And, and in so doing, the Bible tells us that we bring praise to his name. We bring glory to his name. We bring honor to his name. So Israel, because of their waywardness, because of their departure from God's word, from God's command, they had become like dross. They had become impure. They had become a, a, a people that were bringing dishonor to God instead of honor. They would become a people that were bringing reproach to the name of the Lord among the nations. They, 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 they brought reproach to, to the name of the Lord. They had caused the name of the Lord to be reproached, to be put to shame among the nations. 
And so God said about them in Ezekiel 22 that he would put them in a furnace. He would lock up Jerusalem and make it like a furnace. He would uh, burn it or, 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 or send his, his fire, his wrath upon Jerusalem and that fire would blow through Israel and melt them the way a metal is melted. The way ma uh, metallic materials have to be melted so that uh, they can be shaped or so that they can be purified. So the Lord said he will put them in a furnace. He would put them in a furnace. Uh, Ezekiel 22, 22, for example, Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 22 says these words. It says, as silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall you be melted in the midst thereof. So shall Israel be melted in the midst of Jerusalem. That is what God was going to do. As silver is melted in a furnace, so you will be melted inside her, inside Jerusalem. I will lock it up and make Jerusalem like a furnace. A furnace is a, an equipment where uh, material is put in and it is set in very high temperatures and then impurities are removed. The impurities melt away. The impurities are separated from the actual metal. So that at the end of the process, there will be pure metal coming out, pure gold coming out, pure silver coming out. Amen. So that is what God had said he would do with his people Israel. And now coming to, to the church, I want to read uh, the scripture that is in 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh, let me begin all the way from verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 going onward. The Bible says, Blessed be the Lord, sorry, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faith faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the Bible is speaking here about uh, trials or temptations of many kinds, manifold temptations, or trials of different sorts, different kinds. And the Bible is saying that we rejoice in the knowledge that we are God's people that are kept or preserved by the power of God. We rejoice through faith uh, in that salvation. Although in our rejoicing for a season or for a moment, 
we also experience heaviness through these trials. When we are going through trials, when we are going through various kinds of trials, there, there is an element of heaviness or an element in which there is some pain, an element in which it is not altogether so sweet as we go through these trials, as we go through these testings. Because we have spoken of God's people being like gold, being like silver, being like metallic materials, because we have spoken of them, we have seen from scripture that it has to be tested. They have to be tested, just like gold is tested, to find whether it is genuine or it is fake. So God also allows manifold temptations, uh, which bring an end, some heaviness on us while we are still rejoicing. And in fact, James says, says these words. It's saying almost the same thing like, like we have read in First Peter. In James chapter 1 says this, chapter 1 verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience, but let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing or lacking nothing. Praise God. So, the word of God tells us that as we rejoice being God's people, we at the same time go through for a season, for a moment, we go through uh, momentary trials of different kinds, various kinds of trials. We go through them and the Scripture is encouraging us to count it all joy, to, to see it as, a, 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 as a very joyous thing, that God has counted us worthy to go through those trials. You remember one time when the apostles in the early church, when they, they went through a trial, that early church, after preaching, and they were called by the, the priests, the chief priests and the elders, and they were questioned and mistreated, persecuted. The Bible tells us somewhere in the book of Acts that as they came out, they rejoiced that they had been counted worthy to suffer for the name of the Lord. They rejoiced. They were rejoicing in the midst of those persecutions, in the midst of those trials that they went through in serving the Lord, in preaching the gospel, that they went through. They counted it joy, as the Bible is saying, telling us here in James chapter 1. Counted all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, having this understanding that you are going through those trials, your faith is being tried. Your faith which is more precious than gold, your faith which is being tried, it work at patience in your life. Praise the Lord. It's building character. It's building the character of God. It's building the nature of God into your life. Praise God. You are being processed like gold is being processed. Uh, so, uh, First Peter, where we read, says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The trial of your faith, the trial of your faith. So, never be discouraged when you are going through uh, various kinds of trials. The Bible says, count it all joy. Count it all joy as you go through those, knowing 
understanding this, and the, the, you know, the Bible says that understanding will keep you. Understanding will sustain you. When you know that God is working out something good at the end of it, when you know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose, when you have that knowledge in you, when you, you know it, when you know it, you're not just believing it, but you know it. You know that this trial is working out something good. This, this trial is purifying my faith. This trial is, is causing, is working out patience in my life, which uh, in other places in the Bible says produces endurance. It produces hope that I can go through life with hope, with hope because I've been tried. Amen. Glory to God. So the Bible says, let patience have a perfect work. Allow it. Allow it. Let it have its way. Let that trying of your faith have its way in your life. Let patience have a perfect work. Have a complete work. Let, let it have a complete work. So that at the end, you may be perfect and entire. Wanting nothing or lacking nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 We were quoting in our last program, we were quoting or concluding by the word, the words of Job in Job chapter 23 and verse 10, where he said that uh, he knows the way that I take. God knows the way that I take. God knows the, 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 the process of trying my faith. God knows the way that I take, and after he has tried me, after he has tested me, after he has tested me through these trials, after he has tested me, tested me, I will come forth like gold, like gold, which God can now use for his praise, for his honor, and for his glory. Praise God. It will not be a vessel that brings shame. We know that Job did not shame God when he was tested, when he was tried. He did not shame the Lord. The Lord had, had, had spoken to the devil, spoken to the enemy, and said, where are you from, devil? And the devil, Satan, was saying, I'm from roaming around the earth. And God said to him, have you considered my servant Job? My servant that is, that is perfect. My servant uh, that hates evil. Have you considered him? We know that conversation in Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2. And, and, and God knew that Job was a sort of material that would not embarrass him. The sort of material that will bring honor to his name that will bring glory to his name, that will bring praise to his name. Uh, 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 and so we know that there was never a point where uh, Job uh, like blamed God. Uh, when, when he went through the, 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 the great heavy trial of losing his all, all his children, losing all his property, the Bible says, he did not charge God with foolishness. He did not charge God. Uh, and a simpler way of putting it is that he did not blame God. He did not accuse God. But rather, as we know, he bowed down and worshipped God. Worship, that was a tested material. He did not embarrass God. He did, the devil did not say, look, I told you this man will fail. The devil did not have his way. God, by his grace, he preserved Job through the fire. As we said last time from Isaiah 43, though you pass through the fires, they will not consume you. Though you pass through the flames, they will not kindle upon you. They will test you, they will try you, they will purify you, but they will not consume you. So count it all joy. When you pass through diverse temptations, 
diverse kinds of trials which will come in many different ways uh, 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 to you and to me and to every child of God, every saint. The Lord knows the way that I take. So have that knowledge in you. Have that knowing in you. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Knowing this, that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Knowing this, that God is working out something precious in your life as you go through those various kinds of trials in the name of Jesus Christ. So that at the end, at the end, your faith, your, 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 your life, your character, your, your, your standing shall bring praise, honor, and glory to God. Like uh, it happened for Job, like Job was able. So trials can come to us in different ways, di different ways. It, it, they, they can be good and they can be bad. They can be also bad in different ways. I think there is a place where the Bible speaks about even praise. Where when people speak well of you all the time, all the time, it's by itself a test. It's by itself a trial. It's by itself a trial. There, there is such a scripture in the Bible that speaks about uh, something like that. Uh, let me see if I will be able to find it uh, in the book of Proverbs chapter 27 and chapter 27 and verse 21. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 21. The, this is what the Bible says. Proverbs 27 and verse 21. I'm talking about various kinds of trials that purify our lives. The Bible says, the, this is NIV, the crucible, the crucible for silver and the furnace for gold. But people are tested by their praise. People are tested by their praise. Uh, I, I, I may not have the full understanding of that verse, but it could be saying that whatever praises we speak or good things we speak, whether about ourselves, is itself a reflection or a test or what people say about you. Uh, Jesus one time said, be careful when, speak, when people speak well of you all the time uh, and like they're flattering you. When people are flattering you with praises, it's a test of some kind. Is a test of some kind. So testings may not always be some different kind of painful thing, but it could even come in form of flattery, where people are speaking well of you. And Jesus said, be careful. Watch when people are speaking well of you all the time, all the time, all the time, praises, which may not be true, which may not be genuine, is a test, is a test. Or it could be on the negative side, somebody speaks bad of you, somebody slanders your name, somebody speaks evil of your name. Uh, uh, as a child of God, you will go through such. Uh, there are many places in, in the book of Psalms, maybe in particular, where the psalmist is speaking and saying that there are tongues, the tongues of the wicked, the tongues of people, they're like, arrows. They're like uh, arrows. Their words are like arrows and their tongues are like bows. They, they shoot arrows at you and they come at you like an arrow. Somebody speaks so bad about you. Somebody slanders your name. Somebody uh, maligns you. Speaks malice about you. It's a trial. It's a testing. It's a testing. The friends of Job, they did not really comfort him. The friends that came upon him, they, around him, 
they actually added to his pain. Their words were like arrows. So being spoken evil of, as the Lord said, people will speak evil of us. The world will hate us. Those are various kinds of trials that we will go through to purify us. Amen. But know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That all things, even those that look bad, those that, 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 are, that touch you in a bad way, they will work out for good. In Jesus' name. So I want us to conclude with prayer in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty God, and we give you praise and the glory. We thank you, Father, that your word instructs us to count it all joy when we go through various or diverse kinds of temptations, various trials, trials of all sorts and kinds that come against us, that comes, come around us. Lord, you have instructed us to count it all joy despite the heaviness, despite the pain in them, despite the pain in them. And so we take up the courage of your word. We take up, oh God, we take up our Father by faith in Jesus' name that we will go through knowing that the trying of our faith is like the trying of gold and it shall come out precious. It worketh patience in us and patience when it has its complete work, it will cause us to be perfect and entire, lacking nothing, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for the viewer at the point in which they are going through any trial. I pray for grace. I pray for strength. I pray, O oh God, for courage. In the mighty name of Jesus, they shall not crumble. O oh God, they shall not fall apart, but they shall be built. They shall be edified. They shall be strengthened. In the mighty name of Jesus, and so I pray for covering of our Father upon the viewer. I pray that you meet them, O oh God. I pray that you minister to them, the healing to the sick person that is listening to this program, and they need healing. I speak healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak deliverance from oppression in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak victory in challenges. I speak financial breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the holding together of their family. I speak restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak, O oh God, your visitation upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord of glory, I pray that you minister to them, O oh God, at their point of need. Thank you, Father. Receive the glory and praise and the adoration, because we are praying and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you. And if you're listening to this program and you're not born again, I would like to lead you in a prayer of repentance, a prayer in which you are surrendering your heart, your life to the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can be born again by a, a, a miracle birthing that the Bible calls being born again, being born of the Spirit, I would like you to lead you in a, a prayer of repentance. Just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come unto you. I lay my life before you as I repent of my sin. You alone can save me from my sin. You are the Lord who saves the sinner. And so I repent of my sin. Wash me in your precious blood and save my soul. I receive you into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior and to reign in my heart. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to assure you from the word of God that from this day you are a child of God. If you are not born again, if you didn't know the Lord, you are from this day a child of God. So go to 
the church the Lord will lead you in your region, in your area, and join up with other believers and be taught the word of God and grow thereby in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.